I spent a year in Calamity Terraria. This is part 1 out of 2 parts of spending a year in Calamity Terraria. Here are 2 notes before we begin. First off, this is a Terraria year, not a real life year. This is still a very long amount of time, since I'm basically spending 365 Terraria days, which is about 146 hours of playtime into one world. Second, this is a large world on not Revengeance, not Death Mode, but the Infernum difficulty, an unofficial Calamity difficulty that changes the game and bosses in many ways and reworks them in general. It's just because the new Infernum update came out and I want to try to beat it again. Like and subscribe since I want to hit 20,000 subs and let's begin! On day 1, I spawn in, turn on Infernum, and open my treasure nice. bag. Of course, the day counter is broken again. Yeah, the day counter you see there, it's broken. It's always higher than the actual day, so don't be fooled by it. I used the mana star I got, destroyed some trees for wood, then realized I forgot to turn the texture pack on. I turned it on, and that looks way better. If you're wondering what it is, it's the Calamity texture pack. So then, I started caving. I found two life crystals, but then ended up dying. After making a platinum pickaxe, I dug down since I didn't want to explore the surface since it was night. But for some reason, a few seconds after I dug down, I found a gold chest. I'm not cheating! I don't know why, but finding a gold chest so close to the surface isn't normal. Maybe it's Calamity, maybe it's just weird world gen, who knows. And it had a cloud in a bottle, so I'll take it. I kept looting and I got more life crystals and enough silver to make a set of silver armor. So on the first day, I already have a lot of health and a good set of armor. That's a good start. On day 2, I went up using blocks to explore the planetoids. I looked for the planetoid lab and after finding it and collecting the chest loot, I used gravitation potions to explore the sky. I got those gravitation potions from the chest loot from the lab, so that's how I got them. I explored the skies, finding an enchanted sword, a few life crystals, and some more sky island loot. I then made some more insta houses for more NPCs. On day 3, I just went exploring. I found a pyramid which had a sandstorm in a bottle. While exploring, I found this hole, and I thought it would lead to an enchanted sword shrine, but instead, I found the Calamity Forest Shrine, which had a trinket of chi, which provided life regen and damage reduction to the player. With swiftness potions and silk, I crafted Hermes boots. Yeah, you can actually craft a lot of vanilla items in Calamity, and I love that change. I then went to the snow bomb. When I went there, I found this cool snow house, and it had a chest that had a lot of building accessories. I then explored the underground tundra, I found life crystals, and the snow shrine which had a tundra leash, which summoned a rideable snow dog mount. After recalling, I made the flinks for a staff. For this playthrough, I decided to go summoner. I never tried out summoner in Calamity, so it'll be interesting. Spoiler alert, it was a big mistake. On day 4, I realized that I had enough wolfram metal scraps and energy cores to make the wolfram armor set, so I made it. It's a summoner armor set that also gives you the ability to equip the Wolfram Power Armor. While the Wolfram Power Armor is activated, you get a new weapon called the Integrated Fusion Cannon, which is really cool, although it doesn't deal that much damage. I then went inside the underground jungle to get stingers and jungle spores. Then I crafted the Snapthorn and the Belladonna Spirit Staff. I assume you already know what the Snapthorn is, but the Belladonna Spirit Staff summons these spirits that deal a good amount of damage, but I got the damage modifier on it, so that's bad. A slime rain occurred on day 5, and just for the fun of it, I killed enough slimes for the king slime to spawn. Even though I knew I would die, and even though I didn't expect to first try it, I got destroyed. Shredded. I did no damage, and it did insane damage to me. So I thought I was still underpowered. So I went to the corruption. You might notice. Why are there crimson hearts and altars if this is a corruption world? Well, this is actually a crimson world. But both evil bombs are in this world because I downloaded the Fargo's Best of Both Worlds mod which made both bombs spawn in one world. I did this just for there to be more exploration. I broke two hearts so I could get the goblin army to spawn. After that, I made an instavator just for convenience. On day 6, a goblin army approached from the west. After I defeated it, I went into the underground and looked for the goblin tinkerer. I found him pretty easily, and I ended up buying rocket boots and a tinkerer's workshop from him. Then I built my base until day 9. I decided to go for a revamp of my 100 days of infernum house, just to bring it back. But I made it way better. I was going for a castle build back then, but this time I wanted to actually make it look like a castle. So instead of using wood for it like last time, I actually utilized painting and I added a good structure to it. I also had to cheat in some specific blocks in, like the palladium column. Why? Building purposes. 
It's not cheating because it isn't going to affect the actual gameplay. While I was setting up pylons, I felt an evil presence watching me. So I just went into the underground and waited for the whole night, since I didn't want the eye to spawn. On day 10, I made the Wolfram controller, which summoned these drones that dealt damage with lasers. After reforging my items, I then explored the full left side and the full right side of the surface. I wanted to explore everything, so that's why. While I was exploring the left, I found a structure with an item called the tablet pedestal in the middle. I'm guessing it's a part of the new Infernum update. I then felt an evil presence watching me again, but this time I decided to just fight it. And I don't know about you guys, but I did no damage. Maybe this is just summoner? Who knows. On day 11, I bought a bloody tear from the Abomination, a quality of life NPC. Then I used that to summon a blood moon, and I hoped to get a shark tooth necklace. And I managed to get one, along with 7 money troughs. On day 12, I made my arena that I was going to use for bosses. Then I made a slime crown and summoned the king slime. Now here's the thing, when I summoned the king slime, I didn't do it with any sort of buffs or intention to defeat it. This was just a test run, but somehow, I managed to actually kill it. I got the slimy saddle, the mount that I wanted. I also got the slime pad. Amazing. Look at this guy. I love him. From days 13 to 15, I made an underground base for the underground pylon. On day 16, I saw that the torch god was the next thing to do on the boss checklist. So I mined up a small arena in the underground and did the torch god. It was really hard, for some reason way harder than my last inferno playthrough. I think it's because since I'm using summoner, I'm very squishy so it makes sense. On day 17, I decided it was time to prepare to fight the first calamity boss, the desert scourge. So I went into the underground desert and I somehow found the desert shrine, which had a luxurious gift. Anyways, at first I was getting the materials to craft a desert medallion by killing antlions. But then I found a desert medallion in a desert chest, so I guess that makes things easier. Then I fought the desert scourge. I died, but that was just a test run without any sort of buffs and such. So after getting some buffs and trying to fight it again, it became a cakewalk. I used the crafting materials I got from the Desert Scourge to make the full Victide armor set. I wanted to fight the Desert Scourge again because he has a chance to drop a new staff called the Seabound Staff. It looked so cool so I slept until day 18 and fought the Scourge again. It took me days 18 and 19 just to get the weapon and I don't know why. But the Seabound Staff was actually pretty good. It summoned these brittle stars that charged at the enemy dealing some good contact damage. On day 20 I made a trip to the Sunken Sea, the new biome that I got access to after defeating the Desert Scourge. It's under the underground desert and I can get a lot of good loot from it. While I was digging down though, I found the Infernum Desert Temple. The structure isn't important right now, but trust me, it'll be important later. After I went to the Sunken Sea, I spent the entire day trying to find ghost spells, which are enemies that spawn in the Sunken Sea. The reason I wanted ghost spells to spawn was to get an item called the Voltaic Jelly, which is a summoner accessory. But sadly, I didn't get it because I couldn't find a single ghost spell for some reason. On day 21, I made a new accessory called the Spirit Glyph, which gives me a random buff every time my summons hit an enemy. I then went to the Corruption and made a suspicious looking eye. I wanted to fight the Eye of Cthulhu, so I slept until night and summoned it. Or actually, it summoned itself, and I beat it.
I got the Shield of Cthulhu, as well as the Death Stare Rod. The Death Stare Rod is a summon weapon that summons an eye that shoots lasers at enemies. You can summon only one eye though. This was the point where I added a new mod called the Unofficial Calamity Webs, which adds several new webs to the Calamity mod. So then I made a new web called the Static Scourge, and it was a short but fast web. But it still did less damage than my Snapthorn, so I didn't use it. I then realized the next thing to do on the list was the Acid Rain. So I slept till day 23 and went to the Sulphur Sea. The Acid Rain was actually pretty easy. Then I grinded King Slimes, and I have Cthulhu's for more money to buy 30 stack potions from the quality of life NPCs. 30 stack potions are basically if you get 30 of one potion, you keep that potion buff forever. In my opinion, it's not cheating, and I honestly just find it something that reduces grinding. On day 24, I made another trip to the sunken sea to try and kill the giant clam. This time I used Gil's potion so I didn't run out of breath, as well as making an actual arena using explosives. And after doing all that, I actually beat it with a sliver of health left. The new Sea King NPC spawned called Emidius, and I bought a new whip called the Coral Crusher. It did less damage than my Snapthorn, but it had more range. On day 25, I tried farming ghost spells again in the sunken sea, but this time with battle potions for the boosted spawn rates. And they actually started spawning, and sure enough, I got the Voltaic Jelly, which gave me an extra minion slot. Then I went to my closest mushroom biome and made an arena, because I wanted to fight Krabulon next. So I went to the Crimson, crafted the summoning item, and summoned Krabulon, and I got melted. And I kept trying to kill Krabulon until day 26, which is when I finally beat Krabulon. I then spent until day 27 adding a new floor to the castle. This floor isn't done yet since I still need to add furniture, but it'll do. Day 28 was mainly just farming desert scourges and I have Cthulhu's for money. Then I spent it all on 30 stack potions. I then realized that the next bosses were the evil barn bosses. I wondered which to fight first, the Eater of Worlds or the Brain of Cthulhu. Again, I have both evil bombs in this world, so don't forget about that. I decided to fight the Eater, and I did no damage. So instead, I went to the Crimson, got some vicious mushrooms, and crafted the Bloody Spine. And on day 30, I fought the Brain of Cthulhu. And for some reason, I beat it. I was expecting to have a lot of trouble with this fight, like last playthrough, but I guess not. Maybe it's because true melee last playthrough was a pain. I then went to the underworld, got a hellforge, and crafted the obsidian armor set. On day 31, I went to the underworld again and mined up some hellstone. Then I used the hellstone to craft the imp staff and the cinder blossom staff. You already know what the imp staff is, but the cinder blossom staff summons this fire flower over your character, which shoots these fire projectiles. I then tried to fight the eater again, and I kept dying. I did no damage to it for some reason. So on day 32, I went straight to the hive mine, and after a few tries, I actually beat it. You're too much <laughs> On day 33, I tried to fight the perforators again, and I did no damage, so I died so much. <laughs> 
I decided that I was going to fight it again after getting a better loadout. So I focused on upgrading on days 34 and 35. I made the Sky Splitter, a new whip by the Calamity Whips mod. I then farmed many Desert Scourges for more money. Or, you guessed it, more 30 stack potions. I also made the Terra Spark Boots and a bundle of balloons. I then finished the day by mining out a space for the Old Ones Army Arena, since I'm planning to do that next. But while I was mining the space out, I found this particle on the ground, and when I touched it, I got an Infernum achievement completed. This item is called the Sakura Bud, and it doesn't do anything. Yet. On days 36 and 37, I made the Old Ones Army Arena. I want to add a lot of more decoration to it, but for now, it looks good. On day 38, I defeated the first tier of the Old Ones Army. It was pretty easy. Then with my upgraded gear, I tried another go at the Perforators. After multiple tries, I finally beat it. On day 39, I decided to go searching in the underground jungle. I wanted to find the jungle shrine, because the jungle shrine usually has a wide open arena around it, so I could use that open area to fight the queen bee, the next boss I want to fight. But while I was searching, I found a new structure that Infernum added. I don't know what it's called, but it looks amazing. Also remember that Sakura bud I got on day 35? Well, if you throw it in the pond in the spawn, something happens. So I throw it in, and nothing happens. Yeah, people told me that's the pond you're supposed to throw it in, so I think it's just because I'm in pre-hard mode. So I'll try again later. But for some reason, I couldn't find the jungle shrine, the original thing I was looking for. So instead, I spent day 40 making my own Queen Bee Arena. And I completed the Queen Bee Arena, as well as being my future Plantera Arena on day 41. And the next day, on day 42, I beat the Queen Bee. After killing the queen bee, the witch doctor moved in, so I slept till night and bought the pygmy necklace from him, since you can only buy the pygmy necklace at night. Then I spent day 43 and 44 doing nothing but farming desert scourges for money, so now I'm pretty much good with money. On day 45, I made some bee armor using bee wax I got from the queen bee, then I tried my first fight with Skeletron. Look at that, that's me. If you guys don't know, this boss is actually hard in Infernum. It's usually the first real challenge people face in this mod, but this was just a test run, so it's fine. I also got the dungeon's curse from dying to this fight, which allows me to summon Skeletron anywhere without having to talk to the old man. So on day 46, I summoned Skeletron again, expecting to die to it, but I beat it.
With the Skeletron being killed, the dungeon opened up. So I go there on day 47. It took me a long time with the unholy amount of maces, but I managed to get a shadow key and the cobalt shield, the two things that I needed. But then I found out that there was a new weapon called the Staff of... I'm not saying that. But the staff has dropped from the dark casters in the dungeon. So I go back again and farm dark casters. And on my second dark caster only, I got it. I'm not complaining. And when I tested it out, this thing dealt a lot of damage. It summoned these small skeletons that charged at the enemy. I tested it out on the king slime, but then I realized how wonky it actually was. Because the skeletons can't fly, they can only jump. So although they deal amazing damage, it only works against certain bosses. On day 48, I tried to beat the Eater of Worlds once and for all. And I still kept dying with post Skeltron gear. How? So instead, I tried fighting Deer Clops. It took me until day 49 to beat it. I then crafted the overloaded sludge and summoned the slime god. And for some reason, I had so much more trouble with this boss than last playthrough. When I beat it, I got the electrolyte gel pack, which gave me a boost to my rage and adrenaline. I spent day 50 doing some final upgrades to my loadout. I made the static gel armor set, and also made the congel dual whip, which shot two whips, and if you right click, you would shoot each whip in the opposite direction. I also made the jelly charged battery, which combined my voltaic jelly and wool from battery. Lastly, I reforged all of my items to the best possible modifiers. So now we're good to go, right? Well, not really. I still want to build some things and get ready for hard mode before I actually kill the wall of flesh. From days 51 to 54, I just worked on my castle. It isn't fully done yet, but it works. From days 56 to 59, I made a really big arena. I'm planning to use this for most of my boss fights. It's also decorated, so that's pretty cool. From days 60 to 62, I made my snowbomb house, which is of course the revamped version of my old Infernum snowbomb house. I explored the new abyss on day 63. Infernum actually reworked the abyss to be much more structured and mysterious. I was only able to explore up to the second layer, but how you get the abyss loot is different. I got the iron boots by mining this skeleton that I found, and I got the strange orb by mining this pearl. Both items aren't really that useful to me right now. You can also get the other abyss loot by crafting them instead of finding them in chests. Day 64 was just spent making all of my pylon bases. So now I have access to a bunch of more pylons. On day 65, I explored the Brimstone Crag. This is the first time I've actually seen this biome after the latest Calamity update, so it looks way better. I didn't find much useful loot though. And from day 66 to 75, I built a lot of things. Now here's the thing, I'm going to be talking about the build, so I'll leave a timestamp while editing to when it ends, since I'm sure there are people who don't want to see building. Anyways, the first thing I did was complete my castle. There's still many things to improve for this build, but I'm proud of this, and it looks way better than the old one in 100 Days of Infernum. There's also the snowbomb house that I made, and of course, it was a revamp of the old Infernum snow house. Next, there's the desert house, which I honestly like. This one wasn't a revamped version of the old Infernum house because the old one kind of sucked. Then there's the jungle house, and I love this one. Lastly, the ocean house, and it looks cool too. I'm honestly proud of these builds, and they're probably my best ones yet. 
On day 76, the last thing I wanted to do before fighting the wall of flesh was to just get some cool vanity. There's no point of going into hard mode without looking cool while doing it, so I spent the day making a nice vanity set. I used the Belladonna vanity set, and on day 77, I used the double obsidian insta bridge from Fargo's mutant mod to make a bridge through hell, and after farming voodoo dolls, I summoned the wall of flesh. Well, wall of fish run actually, but I managed to do it first try. I got the demon heart, and I also managed to get the firecracker first try. I also realized that my astral biome landed right where my arena was, and honestly that was perfect, since now I don't need to build an arena for Arius and Dias, and a certain other boss we'll have to fight. From day 78 to 80 I did a lot of grinding. First off I mined enough palladium to make a palladium pickaxe. If you didn't know, Calamity makes it so that you can only get cobalt and palladium after you defeat the wall of flesh, and you need to kill the mech bosses to get the higher hard mode tiers of ore. I wanted a good armor set so I went to a nearby spider biome and farmed fangs till I got enough to make the full spider armor set. Then I grinded in the snow biome for ice claspers, since they drop a summoner weapon. Eventually I got the weapon, which is called the ancient ice junk, which summons these ice claspers that charge at the enemy. After that I just farmed the wall for the summoner emblem. Then I made my way to the sunken sea to kill the giant clam, and it's because I wanted mollusk husks to make a new whip by the calamity webs mod, the prism break. After dying multiple times and finally killing the giant clam, I got enough mollusk husks to make the whip. It had less speed than my firecracker, but it did more damage and had more range, so I decided to use it. Then I bought 99 pixie dust from the quality of life NPCs and farmed souls of light till I got the fairy wings. Lastly, I bought the counter scarf from the cloth here, since it's a better dash than my shield of Cthulhu. I also got the first shadow flame by grinding the goblin army, and I reforged all of my items to menacing. Before doing any bosses though, I just wanted to clear the frost legion and the pirate invasion, so I spent day 81 doing that. It's because they were next on the checklist, and again, I want to do everything every single boss and event. So on day 82, I fought my first hard mode boss, Queen Slime. And here's the thing, this is the first boss in this playthrough that actually got a full rework. It took me 8 attempts, but I'm not mad because of how fun this fight was. Just watch. On day 83, I fought Crowgen. It took me two attempts, but there wasn't any real changes to this boss.
Then, on days 84 and 85, I spent that time fighting the Aquatic Scourge. This boss received a massive rework, and at first, I thought it was really cool, but this boss took me 21 attempts. I don't know why, but each hit took a quarter of my health out. It did way too much damage. So either it needs a bit of balancing, or, well, maybe it's just because I'm playing Summoner. It's a really nice fight, though. After I killed it, the second tier of the acid rain started, so I got the hat done. Day 86 was just spent looking for good summon weapons. I didn't like the ancient ice chunk anymore, since the damage was a bit too low. So I tested two staffs, the deep sea staff, which is obtained from the aquatic scourge, and the caustic staff, which is crafted with a bunch of hard mode evil bound materials. The caustic staff was even worse than the ice chunk, but the deep sea staff on the other hand was amazing. The DPS was way better, so I used that. On day 87, I fought the destroyer. As far as I can remember, I don't think there are much changes in this fight, and because of that I'm confused why this boss took me 3 attempts, unlike the 1 attempt it took me last playthrough. On day 88, I got a few upgrades. I got a new whip from the Calamity Whips mod called the Sulfuric Scourge. It did more damage and was faster than the Prism Break, so I used it. Then I went to the Brimstone Crag, and with the Mithril Pickaxe, I was able to mine Infernal Suvite. And with that, I made the Igneous Exaltation, and it ruined my expectations. Wow, that actually rhymed. It basically spawned these swords around your player, and when you right-clicked, it made the swords dash into your cursor. And it was very annoying to hit people with it, so I just kept using the Deep Sea Staff. So then, I fought the twins, and it's actually hard. I died to it for some reason, unlike last playthrough. Did I get worse at the game, or is Summoner just this bad? I don't understand. On day 89, I summoned a Blood Moon and fished for the Dreadnautilus. It took me way too long for some reason, but once it spawned, I realized that Infernum actually reworked the Dreadnautilus. But I still managed to beat it and get my hands on the Sanguine Staff. And on days 90 and 91, I fought the Twins. It took me quite a few attempts, but in the end, I beat it.
After defeating the twins, Adamanti and Titanium generated my world, so I mined a bunch of those on day 92. And I crafted an Adamanti pickaxe and mined a bunch of cryonic ore in the underground snow bottom. Cryonic ore generated after cryogen but you can only mine it with an adamantite or titanium pickaxe. So now I was able to get it. I used the cryonic ore to make a set of Daedalus armor, which also summoned this crystal that shot projectiles at enemies. I also made the Ornate shield, which not only gave me a dash, but also had a lot of defense and health, so it was way better than the counter scarf. Lastly, I made the Daedalus whip, another whip from the Calamity Whips mod. While I was in the Astral Bomb though, this purple slime mini boss appeared, and it was easy, but I got the Astral Communicator from it. I used it just because why not, and, uh... If you don't know, this little guy is called Aster Jeldon. If you haven't noticed, I installed the Catalyst mod, a Calamity mod add-on that adds a new boss. Or should I say, an old one, which is Aster Jeldon. It was originally in the official Calamity mod, but then it got replaced by Arius. Which was a bad move in my opinion because Arius is the worst boss ever. The Catalyst mod though adds back Astro Jeldon, and he's supposed to be fought the same time as Deus. And Deus is supposed to be fought after the Cultist, and I haven't even defeated Skeltron Prime yet, so it makes sense why I died. On day 93, I tried my first fight with the Brimstone Elemental. With the Sanguine Staff, I did no damage, so I instead used the Deep Sea Staff, and it worked like a charm. I managed to get the Dormant Brimseeker, a cool summoner weapon that summons Brimseekers that charge at the enemy. And I love this weapon, I used it for so long. Then on day 94, I fought the last mechanical boss, Skeltron Prime. From day 95 to 114, I did some building, since I needed a break from constantly fighting bosses. More building talk, so I'll put another timestamp on screen if you want to skip over the building. Alright, so firstly, there's the Astral Infection House. I don't like this one, honestly. The walls look kind of iffy, and it took me so long just to get something that doesn't look horrible, but I guess I'm fine with this for now. There's also the Hallowed House, which I like a lot. It resembles the wizard tower that I made last playthrough, but I actually used castle textures and changed up the structuring a bit. I used some inspiration from Rido Gaming's Mage Tower because his builds are awesome. The space house is also cool. It resembles a spaceship and I want to improve this house later. Lastly, the Brimstone Crag House, which looks similar to the castle I built in my last Inferno playthrough, and I'm cool with it. Also, for some reason on day 108, when I was going back to Brimstone Crag, since I was preparing to build my Brimstone Castle, I saw this happen. So yeah, apparently Calamitous was paying respects to the Brimstone Elemental, and we got to see a glimpse of her. Honestly, that's really cool and it just adds on to the lore. 
So on day 115, after crafting a temple key, I searched for the jungle temple. If you don't know, you can actually craft a temple key and go inside it before Plantera and Calamity. For some reason, it took me way longer than it should have, but in the end, I managed to find it. I opened the temple, and after dying to the traps and going back, I got a solar tablet, which is what I wanted. I then used that solar tablet on day 116 and farmed solar eclipse enemies until I got the broken bat wing. Once I got that, I used it to make the bat wings, which are a replacement to my fairy wings since they have more flight time. I also made the sun god staff, which summons the sun above my head that shoots lasers at enemies. I then spent day 117 doing some upgrades. First off, I made the angel treads, which is an upgrade to my terrace park boots. I also made the daedalus golem staff, which summons these small golems that shoot lasers at enemies. Then I farmed brain of Cthulhu till I got enough money to buy the rod of discord from the wizard. That's right, in calamity, you can actually buy the rod of discord from the wizard if he's in the hallowed biome. Lastly, I went to the underground jungle and mined chlorophyte and life fruit to max out my health. Calamity increases life fruit rates, so I was able to max out my health pretty easily. On day 118, since I had some leftover life fruit, I crafted the blood orange, which gave me an extra 25 max health. Then I decided I wanted to fight the next boss, the Calamitous Clone. So I crafted the Eye of Desolation and summoned the Calamitous Clone. Or so I thought, because this boss actually got reworked heavily and now it's called the forgotten shadow of calamitous and they completely respited and reworked this boss and here's the thing this boss is hard the first six attempts i couldn't even get it to half its health so from days 119 to 125 i tried to kill the shadow of calamitous and it took me 24 attempts but it's fine because we beat it On day 126, using the ashes of calamity I got from the boss, I made the Lash of Languish. It did way more damage than my Daedalus Whip, so I used it. I also did the second tier of the Old One's army, just for fun. I then spent day 127 making my Queen Bee Arena bigger so I can use it to fight Plantera. And on day 128, I fought Plantera. It took me a couple of attempts, and I don't know why I keep losing to bosses I first tried last Infernum playthrough. Three options. Either Infernum did some major balance changes on these bosses, or I got worse at the game, or Sumner is just worse than Ranger. One of those three options.
On day 129, I bought Tiki Armor from the Witch Doctor. I also realized that I was running out of money, so I farmed 100 I of Cthulhu's to get as much money as possible. On days 130 and 131, I farmed the Pumpkin Moon, since I can get some nice summoner upgrades from it. I managed to get enough spooky wood for a full set of spooky armor, and since I got a necromantic scroll, I crafted the Papyrus Scarab, since it gave me a good boost to my minions. Day 132 was a lot of upgrading. I made the Asgard's Veiler an upgrade to the Ornith Shield. I also got the Tattered Fairy Wings, since they have more flight time than my Bat Wings. And lastly, I made the Status Blessing, which gives me a bunch of good summoner buffs, like more damage, more minions, and more. On day 133, I did the Acid Rain event to fight the Kragma Mire, a mini boss in the Acid Rain. I did it just because I wanted to get it off my boss checklist. Then I fought the Leviathan, but for some reason my minions kept despawning while fighting the boss. So on day 134, I tried using the Entropy's Vigil instead. It summons a trio including the Calamitous clone and her brothers, and each trio takes 2 minion slots. I already had this weapon since it dropped from the Shadow of Calamitous, so I used it against the Leviathan, and it was garbage, it did no damage. So instead, I used the Raven Staff, and that also did bad. So from days 135 to 138, I instead fought Arius. I hate this man. Please, remove him. Like I honestly have a question. Who likes Arius? Anyways, that's my ranting done. But this boss took me 12 attempts. Like what? On my Ranger playthrough, it took me 1 attempt for Arius. And this one took me 12. Really considering switching to Mage. On day 139, I made a new whip from the Calamity Whips mod called the Stellar Wind, and it was pretty good, but it was worse than the Lash of Languish, so I didn't use it. I also went to the underground astral and farmed these enemies called Stellar Silix, and I farmed them until they dropped the Starbuster Core, a really nice summoner accessory which boosted my minion slots. I then went to the dungeon and found the desert chest and opened it. Listen, I don't know when or where I got the key, but I saw that I had it in my storage, so I'll take it. I got the Desert Tiger Staff, and I tried that against the Leviathan. It didn't work. On day 140, I went to the underground astral and farmed hives until they dropped a hive pod, which is a sentry that summons these hives that protected me. And after going back to using the brim seekers, I finally beat the leviathan. On day 141, I used the Temple Teleportation Potion and fought Golem. Now guess what happened? This fight is still broken. Here's the thing, the laser attack isn't bugged anymore, but you know what was bugged? My arena being half the size it's supposed to be. So some of the attacks were near impossible to dodge because, well, the arena isn't supposed to be this small. Thanks game, I spent the entire day fighting Golem. 
on days 142 and 143, I kept trying to kill Golem. Here, I don't want to try to kill Fishron before Golem, as I want to try to fight every boss at the right progression point in this playthrough. But I died so much, and I would have beat it if my arena actually worked. But I'm not going down just yet. So on day 144, I bought Leviathan treasure bags from one of the quality of life NPCs until I got the Gastric Belcher's staff. I also reforged a lot of my items, so then I fought Golem again. And good lord, I was destroying him with this new summon weapon. In fact, I beat it on the second try after getting this new weapon. And without health potions, and I didn't even realize. Days 145 and 146 were spent doing the Frost Moon and the Martian Madness events. They were on the boss checklist, so I figured why not and did them. On day 147, I did the Old Ones Army event, but I failed because of Betsy. So on day 148, I made some upgrades to my loadout. I went to the Abyss to try and find Scoria Ore, but since I couldn't go deep into it, I crafted the Abyssal Diving Gear, which boosted my breathing level in the Abyss by a lot. Once I got that, I was able to go deep enough where I was able to mine Scoria Ore. I used the Scoria Ore to craft the Hydrothermic Armor Set, and it also summons this Hydrothermic Vent to protect me. I also grinded in the Underground Jungle for Plague Enemies to get Plaguebringer Canister and I used the Plaguebringer canisters to make the Withered Blossom Staff, which summons these flowers over my head that shoot green projectiles at the enemy. Then I tried to do the Old One's Army again with my upgraded loadout, and it worked like a charm. Day 150, 32 more days to go, stay with me here. Using life alloys, I combined my Wolfram battery and Starbuster core to make the Star Tainted Generator, a really good summon accessory that boosts minion damage and gives more minion slots. Since I had a leftover accessory slot, I decided to buy some Leviathan treasure bags until I got the community, and I actually got a first try. Then I made the Miracle Fruit, which gives me an extra 25 health just like the Blood Orange. At this point, I didn't really want to kill any more bosses till the next video, since I wanted to go through this playthrough slowly. So let's make this world beautiful. From days 152 to 159, I finished the rest of the pylon bases. They aren't completely done, since I want to decorate some of them a bit more. More building talk, so another timestamp on screen if you want to skip over it. The first thing I did was add more relics to the relic room. I also added some banners to it for some more decoration. Next, I made the sulfurous sea house. Some of you may not like the colors of it, but honestly, I like this one. It fits the sulfurous sea theme, and I'm proud of it. I also added some Martian plating to the spaceship house, since I had access to it now. Next, there is the new sunken sea base. It resembles the giant clam mini boss, and I like it. Lastly, for the showcase, there is the mushroom base, and I'm probably gonna change this one later on. I don't like it very much. From days 160 to 162, I made my arena taller. It took me three days because I had to mine out some sky islands since they were blocking the way. On day 163, I bought a lot of 30 stack potions. Then I did a final money grinding session. I hope this will last me through the rest of the playthrough. I spent days 164 and 165 making a cool teleportation system using wiring. I had five teleportation spots. My Plantera Arena, the Temple, the Profane Temple, which is where I'll have to summon the Profane Guardians and Providence in the future, the Forsaken Archive, and the Abyss. This will help me in many ways and it's something purely for convenience. On days 166 and 167, I completed my Old Ones army building. It looks pretty good for now. At this point, I still had about 15 days left, and I already built a lot, so I decided to just fight a few more bosses. So on day 168, I fought Duke Fishron. It took me two attempts, but I beat it.
I didn't get the fish on wings, so I bought a few Duke fish on treasure bags until I got it. Then I farmed plague enemies in the underground jungle for plague bringer canisters. Then I used those to make the abomination. And on day 169, I used the abomination to summon the plague bringer Goliath. And I beat it first try, baby. It took me like 15 attempts last playthrough, so maybe they nerfed this boss. After I beat it, I made the Plaguebringer armor. I also started using the infected remote, which summons this Plaguebringer that uses an attack pattern of framing the enemy and shooting projectiles. It uses 3 minion slots and I can only summon one of them. I then bought some prismatic lace wings from the drunk princess, and on day 170, I tried my luck against the Empress of Light. And here's the thing, I actually skipped this boss last Inferno playthrough, so this'll be interesting. And I died. So from days 171 to 178, I kept dying to the Empress of Light. But in the end, I beat it. When I beat it, I got the Kaleidoscope, which is pretty cool, but I also got the Terra Prisma. I think it's an Infernum change, I don't know, I fought this boss in nighttime, not daytime. On day 179, I fought the Ravager, the final boss of this video. It took me a few attempts, but I beat it. When I beat it, I got the Infernal Blood, which increased my rage by 1 second. On days 180 and 181, I made this cool tree next to my castle base, just for decoration purposes. And day 182, the final day of this video, since it marks the half point of this playthrough. So I decided to do what I did in my last Infernal playthrough, try to beat every mechanical boss at once.
And I failed again. Nice. Well, that's the end of this video. This was my biggest video yet, so please like and subscribe, since it helps me out a lot, and I want to hit 20,000 subscribers. I don't have an estimation for when part 2 will come out, but stay tuned on my Discord to hear updates from me, or just talk to anyone in general. Anyways, thanks for watching, and see ya.